Hi, in this video we are going to be exploring the remarkable engineering of Lilium Jet. It is a 5 seat eVTOL aircraft that is under development. Lilium made headlines when it showcased its first successful flight test of a full scale prototype called the Eagle in 2017. The aircraft was nothing like any other aircraft in its category. It looked too good to be true to many people, but on closer inspection, it is actually a very clever design that fully exploits the benefits of electric aviation. All of its ingenuity will be revealed in this video. On this channel, Electric Aviation will bring for you all the latest developments in the world of sustainable aviation and also take a deep dive in our technology explainer videos. Subscribe today to get all of our latest updates. Now, when Lilium advertised targets of achieving cruise speed of 300 km per hour with a 300 km range, alongside VTOL capability, even the most optimistic of engineers felt skeptical. The main reason being the high power and energy that is required by the vertical takeoff and landing. This VTOL energy consumption has a significant bearing on the flight times, given that 10 times more power is consumed during the vertical lift of the flight compared to when the aircraft is fully in the cruise mode, generating lift from its wings. Plus the fact that Lilium jet is powered by battery means we don't have a lot of energy to start with. So how is Lilium going to achieve its targets? Let's have a look at the design first. The airframe of Lilium jet is sleek. It has a total of 36 electric ducted fans or EDF mounted on the canards and on the main wings. The shape of the Lilium jet was inspired by a manta ray. In fact, the sleek body design and the lifting body fuselage give it a very respectable lift to drag ratio of 21 to 1 during cruise mode. Other than power gliders, it is the highest lift to drag ratio in all electric aircrafts that have been developed or are under development. To save weight, the design does not have any tail or rudder. The yaw can be controlled by changing the speed of the EDF. The blades of the fans are housed in the nacelle, thus adding to the safety. The body of the aircraft is made of lightweight composite materials. Lilium has been very selective about revealing the specs of the aircraft. For the two-seat version, some of the numbers that came out were as follows. The empty weight was 440 kilograms. The maximum takeoff weight was 640 kilograms. This means a payload capacity of 200 kilograms is available for transport. For propulsion, it has 36 EDS with 320 kilowatts of total installed power capacity. We will evaluate if these numbers are realistic, but first we will look at the propulsion system. The aircraft consists of 12 fans on the canard and 24 fans on the wings. In aerodynamics, a parameter called disc loading is often used to gauge how much power will be required during vertical lift. It is simply the ratio of area covered by the fans divided by the mass to be lifted. The higher the disc loading, the more power will be required. One of the criticisms leveled against Lilium is its high disc loading. So was it the fact that Lilium was just more focused on optimizing the cruise part of the flight at the expense of vertical takeoff and landing phase? Well, surprisingly not. And we will discover why. Until recently, the electric ducted fans weren't used in the aviation industry. They are mainly used by hobbyists to create model planes. The largest EDF that can be purchased off the shelf is about 195 mm diameter. This furnishes an upward thrust of 250 newtons, or in other words, 25.51 kilograms of lift. Now given that EDF's own weight is 3.4 kg, it can lift up 19.1 kg of extra weight, but it does that with a very high power consumption of 15.6 kilowatts. Let's assume that Lilium uses these 195 mm ducted fans for their own propulsion. In that case, 36 of these fans will be able to provide vertical lift of 688 kg. This is close to the weight of the two-seater variant of Lilium, However, the total power that will be required would be immense, that is 562 kilowatts. Even a 300 kilogram battery pack would struggle to cope with that amount of power requirement. So how is Lilium planning to make it work? Do they use larger custom-made ducted fans that consume less power? Let's find out. First, it should be understood that for an electric ducted fan or even a turbine engine to reach a given amount of thrust, the larger the blade diameter, 
the lesser the power required. To give an example, let's say if 130 Newton of thrust is required, then a 128 millimeter diameter EDF will provide that for 9.7 kilowatts, while a slightly larger EDF of 152 millimeter diameter will provide it for just 8 kilowatts. Now this is a very important point to learn. Lesser power is required for a certain amount of thrust if the swept area for the EDF or the turbine jet is large and the speed of air that is being pushed out is slow as compared to a smaller swept area and higher speed of the exit air. The power required has a cubic relationship with the exit velocity. If we double the exit velocity, the power goes up by 8 times. In other words, the thrust to power ratio increases as the diameter of the EDF increases. It is clear that Lilium uses custom-made ducted fans. From the pictures that have been released, it seems that the diameter is around 250 millimeters. For an upward force of 18 kilograms per EDF to match a total weight of 640 kilograms, this would imply power consumption of 9 kilowatts per EDF. And this gives a total of 324 kilowatts for the 36 fans during the vertical ascent or descent, which is more manageable for the batteries. But this also begs the question why Lilium does not deploy even bigger fans than 250 millimeters when the advantage is so clear in terms of both power and energy reduction. Why does it use 36 relatively smaller EDFs? Well, it turns out there are several reasons for this. Firstly, the thrust to weight ratio drops with the larger ducted fans, or in other words, smaller fans pack more punch for their weight, although they consume more power for doing that, as discussed earlier. For example, a small 90 mm diameter EDF is capable of providing thrust 12 times of its own weight, while a larger 250 mm EDF may give thrust only 6 times of its own weight. This means that if power required wasn't an issue, much lighter VTOL aircraft could be made using several smaller EDFs. But required power is indeed a huge issue that is often ignored by hobbyists who try to make eVTOL aircrafts at home. They end up making the aircraft, but it cannot go very far. The second advantage several smaller EDFs give is the distributed propulsion while cruising. A study conducted by Virginia Polytechnic Institute showed that distributed propulsion reduces the fuel use by 2.7%. There's also redundancy in using multiple EDFs, which increases safety of the aircraft. Also, the maneuverability of an aircraft increases if you use smaller engines. The time taken to increase power or decrease power in a small engine is much less than that in a typical aircraft engine meaning the Lilium jet is able to respond much more rapidly to a control input. The nacelle drag is also very low. But there are two other advantages that are purely due to design ingenuity of Lilium. During the cruise mode, as the boundary layer develops on the top surface, starting from the leading edge, the fluid in close proximity of the wings adheres to it and slows down. The ducted fan at the trailing edge ingests the slow boundary layer leading to higher speed at the top surface of the wing, which in turn means higher lift. The effect of boundary layer ingestion by propulsors is well studied. It was found that 9% reduction in required propulsor mechanical power was needed compared to a non-boundary layer ingestion configuration with the same propulsors. And last but not the least is the design advantage that is patented. It is claimed by Lilium that the fixed portion of the wing also generates lift during vertical takeoff, thereby reducing the power further for VTOL. While the theory on this is not fully clear, but it could be either one of the two following reasons or it may be both. Reason number one, as the EDF swivels to almost an orthogonal position with respect to the fixed part of the wing, its suction draws air from above the top surface of the wing, thereby creating lift. Reason number two, a lift vortex might be created underneath the wing due to the flow interaction between the EDF exit air and the wing, which acts as a guide vane. Note that there have been several studies to assess the vortex trapping to recapture some of the energy of the outlet air. Insects and birds capture the leading edge vortices or LEVs to hover with very little energy spent. Unlike a conventional aircraft where the direction of thrust and nose of the aircraft are in line, 
Lilium can change the direction of the thrust to the most effective angle to reduce the stall speed. The engine nacelles are part of the wing and help create lift. We've got to think of Lilium jet not as a conventional VTOL aircraft but as a vehicle that has such low stall speed that it achieves almost a vertical takeoff. So there you go, we've tried to break down how Lilium will achieve what it has set out to achieve. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video, do give it a thumbs up. If you would like to add something, please do mention it in the comment section. Thank you for your attention.